website of, I can't remember the name of the organization, but there's one sort of core document that's being pushed out there in the past. So you're not really talking about a vast Islamophobic movement. It's actually a fairly small movement and that it's very close-knit. Remember I said David Yerushalmi works for a Center for Security Policy run by Frank Gaffney, who I've already mentioned, and which Mr. Grandy is associated with. So we're, we're not talking a huge thing, but its impact uh, goes well beyond its numbers. And that's, I think, where we need to be very concerned and where groups like in this room are very important because if that law comes to Maryland, then there need to be people of goodwill like the folks in this room who are willing to push back against it. One, I'd say, just to like, go back and maybe touch on with both Corey and, and Jamie Stone and Corey, I'd say get out in front of it. Don't wait for the wave to come to Maryland and act in response to the latest right-wing abuse. Get in front of it and organize around what you want to see. Have a positive vision and go get it. That's what the, the right wing is really good at that, right? Think about Arizona, right? There's a state taking an initiative and through its initiative changing the federal discourse. You can do the same thing here, do it in the other direction. There is a gaping need to restore the civil rights of many different communities. And there's no reason for Maryland to wait for the right wing to come knocking on your door. Especially if there is a sincere commitment to these issues, get in front of the federal government. And um, uh, Jamie, with respect to your point about the sort of, you know, the ongoing, um, the, the genie is out of the bottle, so to speak. I guess one of the angles, you know, we talked about like the Part 51 controversy around like religious siding, and we talked about the anti-Sharia laws. One thing we hadn't talked about, and I have to claim some, uh, this is my failure here to raise, the FBI's training programs. These just broke in the last week. Wired magazine released a whole study about basically bigots and hate monsters being hired by the FBI with your money to come in and train FBI agents. And, and in some cases, you know, one of them downplayed Al Qaeda, claiming that that was not the real threat. The real threat was Islam generally. You know, and, and you should watch these videos. They're very unnerving. Um, and you know, there's one online, and it, it shows what the FBI agents were hearing. And, it, and it's no surprise in the wake of this kind of bias infiltrating the training regime, it's no surprise that the FBI is infiltrating mosques around the country without any thread of even hint of individualized suspicion required under the Fourth Amendment for far less intrusive investigatory measures. Right? I mean, the FBI claims that the same standard even the minimal one that police need to pat somebody down for weapons is not operable in the context of infiltrating First Amendment protected institutions. I mean, so on the one hand, you can have an investigation that threatens the First, the Fourth, and the Fourteenth Amendments with fiat. No suspicion required, no deference, no checks and balances, it's all in secret. No one even knows what the legal standard is. I sued the Bureau in 2008 to find out what is the standard on which undercover infiltrations are conducted. We got the document, the entire chapter on infiltration is redacted to this day. Um, and anyway, yeah, so I just, I just think that there are other demonstrations of Islamophobia, and I think that one of the problems here, not just from a civil liberty standpoint, but a counterterrorism one, is that we are sincerely worried about uh, violent extremism or any other source of national security threat, that we should sincerely address it instead of throwing taxpayer money at a cottage industry uh, this basically, it's opportunism and it's careerism by people with no discernible, credible expertise who are basically capturing a revenue stream. It's, it's exactly what we've seen in the military-industrial complex for 40 years. You know, this is the 40th 
anniversary of President Eisenhower's speech warning us about it. And there's now the creation of a domestic intelligence industrial complex. And this training reflects it, as well as the young Islamophobia intersecting. 